Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to this final video tutorial of this video tutorial series on creating an image gallery with ASP.NET Core 2.1. In this final video tutorial, we will be creating our HTTP put method, which is our web API method to update our gallery. So go ahead and create an asynchronous method, call the method as update gallery and set two parameters, one of type int and second of interface form collection. I've called the first parameter as ID and the second as form data. And the ID of the gallery that we need to up, uh, update comes from the route of our application. So now let's go ahead and first thing that we want to do is check if the model state is valid. And if it is valid, we want to further execute the code. So let's add our condition statement. So I've added my if condition which validates if the model state is valid. Next thing that you want to do is create two counters. One counter will be used to count to the number of image files that is through, through loop through each image file and the second counter will be used to loop through each image captions in our gallery because we'll have multiple image files and we'll have multiple captions. So we would need a counter that we can use or keep track that will help us keep track of how many files have been looped. So let's go ahead and create two counters. So the two counters have been added. Don't worry of these squiggly lines because we have not yet used these variables. Now, the next thing that you want to do is create a variable that will hold the value of the gallery title because when the gallery title is updated, obviously we need to have a variable that will hold the value of that gallery title. And second, we need to get the old gallery information from our database, the gallery that we need to edit therefore we will create a variable for that as well so let's go ahead and do that so the first variable here is going to hold the new title or the updated title and the second variable here will get the details of the gallery that needs to be updated so we are using entity framework and some lambda expression here to get the values of our old entity okay now the next thing that we want to do is we need to get the path of a gallery that we need to update. So the path of a gallery in our server that we need to update. So we need that path. So let's create a variable for that. So we have created a variable called as gallery path that will store the path of the gallery that needs to be updated. If you are not familiar with these uh, methods like methods and objects that I have used please make sure that you watch my previous video tutorials because I have explained all this information in the previous video tutorials when we were creating the gallery so all these objects were created at that point and now we are using it as you see this is done through dependency injection at the start of our method so please if you have skipped any of the previous tutorials please go ahead and watch it as i'm not going to explain again to make this video tutorial lengthy so the next step that we want to do is set an condition to check if the user has updated any files so every time it's not going to be a situation where the user is updating the files the image caption and the title sometimes the user only wants to update the title sometimes he also only wants to update caption or sometimes he only wants to update the image or sometimes he only wants to update everything in that case we are setting end condition over here if it's if, he, if the user only wants to update the files then let's go ahead and set the condition for that so i've set the condition here if the count of the files is greater than zero which means we have more than one files then the code between this if condition will execute so the first thing that we want to do is create an empty array that will store the information of the old files since we are going to update our old image files with new files and we are going to delete the old image files we would need to keep a track of all the image paths of our old image files therefore for that we are going to create an empty array that will help us to store that image path also the size of that array will be same to the count of the 
files because if we are updating three files means we are deleting three files therefore our array count will be equal to the count of the files that needs to be updated so let's do that so the variable to store the old file path has been created the next thing that we want to do is run a for each loop on every file that we have in our form data object that we received so I have created a for each loop that will execute on each file that is present in the form data object and then it's going to have a condition within that that will check if the file length is greater than zero in our form data files so if there's more than one file then it will execute the code over here so let's write the code so we have created five variables over here the first variable will get the extension of the file whether it's in jpeg gif and so on the second variable here will create a unique file name for our file this third variable here will get the path of the where the new file needs to be stored the path of the folder where the file needs to be stored and the fifth variable here is going to have the path of the file that needs to be updated in the database now the variable image id will store the value of the image caption the first image id i'm sorry the image id will store the value of the first image id that we received in our for each loop so when we are going to update a file in our database we want to make sure we are updating the path of the file whose image id is going to be this image id here therefore we have stored it in a variable and then we are going to use it further as we proceed now we need to create a variable that's going to get us uh, uh, all the information of the old image uh, image files like the image path the image id and so on all the information it's basically going to get the image object from our database that needs to be updated similar to getting the image gallery from the database that needed to update it based on the gallery id we are going to get the image from our database based on the image id so let's do that so once we have got the values of the image that needs to be updated from these values we would need to get the old image path before we update it with the new image path because using that old image path we are going to delete the old image files from our server so i've created the two variables here basically the first one is just pushing the value of each old image path to our files to delete path array and then the second array is basically assigning the value of the new image path to our image url property in our gallery image object now the next thing that we want to do is create a file stream object that will copy the new files from our form data to our server in the appropriate gallery folder so let's go ahead and do that so we have uh, made use of the using statement because we're going to create a file stream object that will copy the file to our server and then the object will be destroyed the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a another using statement that will create an object to connect to our database and let the database uh, save the changes to the database so let's go ahead and do that so we have created another using statement here which will update and save changes to our database the reason we use the using statement approach over here because we need to update our files and then we also need to update our image captions and we also need to update the gallery title so we cannot use dependency injection here three times by using the save changes method uh, that's going to cause an error and the database is not going to be updated in order to use more than one uh, 
a save changes method to call this method more than once we have to use the using statement and update the database save the changes then destroy the object so that's the reason why we did it you can go ahead try it without the using statement and i'm pretty sure it's not going to work and that's the reason why i use this approach to create the object within the uh, within the using statement using dependency injection and then destroy the object so all we are doing here is after we have copied the files we are making sure that we have updated the database by informing the database that the entity state is modified because we are updating it uh, remember that when you get the old image details or the old image object from the database since you are using the HTTP put method here the database or your uh, .NET framework is actually listening to any changes that's happening uh, on this object so if any changes is if you are changing anything you have to tell that the entity state is modified over here and that's what exactly we are doing so after we have called the save changes what we want to do here is we want to commit all changes on our database object that we created so all the changes will be committed in case if there was any problems there was an error we are going to roll back all the changes so we have used the try catch block here to do that next thing we want to do is once the loop has completed just before the loop ends we want to make sure that we increase the counter that is the value of the counter to one because we initialized it to zero so now when the loop runs the second time the value of the second image id will be captured from the form data and that would be assigned to this image id so we have to make sure it is looping through each values and that's why we had used this counter now all the loop will get completed through all the numbers of files and after the loop has been completed all new files have been added database has been saved the final step is to go ahead and delete all the old files and to delete all the old files which uh, we need the file path and we have stored all the old file paths in uh, this array here so in order to get all the paths we are going to use a for each loop and loop through each path in this array and then use each path using system.fileio we will delete each file from that path so let's go ahead and do that so make sure that you uh, you come out of your for each loop and after your for each loop has ended there's where you're going to add your another for each loop that will loop through all the file paths in your file delete file to delete path array and delete them using system.io.file so that's it for this if condition now the next step is to add another if condition that is going to validate if we have uh, any image captions as we know even if the user will not update any image captions or leave it blank we will still receive an empty string or empty empty value that's the reason why we have another if condition because we know that this if condition will always execute because we'll always have an image caption so let's add another if condition that will update the image captions for us so let's do that so we have added the condition that will validate and update the gallery title and the image captions so this condition here will validate and update the files and this condition here which we know is always going to execute is going to update the gallery title and the image caption so it's the similar process approach that we used in the previous if condition we are going to assign the value of our title that we received over here in the string object to this uh, object here or gallery so title property and then we are going to call the entity state modified saying that the entity has been modified and the value has been updated and then we do the same approach updating the image caption and using the uh, using statement here and creating a new database context connection 
updating the entity and then closing the connection after it's committed so it's the same approach and finally we are going to send the new uh, json result which is going to tell us that we have successfully updated the gallery so right. so that should be it for our web api method and if you have any questions you can always uh, add your questions in the comment section and also i will be soon updating the github links and also i have already updated the required files and the entire project is now available on my blog which is www.techhowdy.com so all you need to go, do is go to my blog and click on the blog post which says process to create image gallery just click on it and you should file all the required information along with the required files the commands and the project files that i have used in this uh, project so if you have any other questions as i told you you can always use the comment section on the blog post or also in the uh, video description or video comment section so that's it for this uh, video tutorial series hope you liked it and in the upcoming video tutorials we will uh, be creating more complex applications just before we close let's go ahead and run this application and test it to make sure everything works fine and let's wait for the application to load so we are going to load our gallery let's update this gallery call this as animals and let's change this to let's change the images okay okay so now let's go ahead and save these changes just let's open our gallery folder here to see how the old files are getting deleted when the new files will be updated so let's go ahead and then click save and the new files are updated and the old files are deleted we get a confirmation that it was uploaded updated successfully now when we go back we see the new gallery title and the new gallery images as well so once again that's it for this video tutorial all the project files are available on my blog please do like and subscribe our channel tech howdy thank you for watching